Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here today. My name is Andrew Vanage. I'm the Director of Solutions Engineering here with Salona. And I'd like to have a discussion with you today about connecting client devices to a private LTE and 5G network with the Salona infrastructure. We'll go over connecting client devices and some SIM uh, subscriber management capabilities within the Salona solution. And then I'd also like to talk through some of the uh, access point capabilities that are critical to understand within a Salona solution. So we'll go through those two topics. And as we go along, uh, happy to entertain any questions as we go. So first, let's talk about the CBRS device ecosystem. So there's a large and growing list of devices that are compatible with the CBRS spectrum band. Uh, that is technically called band 48 within the 3GPP and, and uh, 4G, 5G ecosystem. So uh, devices that support that band today include uh, over 20 models of mobile devices, including uh, iPhone 11 series devices, iPad Pro that came out this year in 2020, many Android devices like uh, LG, Samsung S10 series devices, and Google Pixel 4. Um, there's also ruggedized and uh, more router gateway type devices that are on the market to support industrial and manufacturing type needs. So some of those devices include cradle point routers, Sierra wireless gateways, and uh, hotspot type devices like from Insego and others. Um, the, a complete list that we're keeping is available on our website at salona.io slash CBRS devices. And in general, we're seeing this grow uh, quite, quite dramatically over the last six months and continue to grow as the chipsets have been standardized and um, the CBRS band is a prime target for 5G deployment. So most of the cellular chipsets that are going into devices support uh, the CBRS spectrum band natively moving forward as just another LTE and 5G band. Um, to talk about subscriber management, uh, one of the key aspects of deploying a private LTE and 5G network are getting client devices connected. So once you've identified a client device that is applicable or, or has a use case in your environment, um, the next step is to understand how to get it provisioned to get on the network. And so through a physical SIM or an eSIM uh, provisioning onto the device, you can get it connected to a private LTE network. Now these are private credentials that you would manage and deploy yourself onto your own uh, corporate owned devices. Provisioning methods include uh, pre-provisioning of physical SIMs, so you can um, get them from Salona as an end-to-end -end solution that are burned uh, with the credentials on them and assigned to your account and then shipped to you along with the infrastructure. Uh, you can also use electronic SIM credentials uh, that will be pushed to devices through mobile device management or enterprise mobility management type solutions that are out on the market today. Uh, we've been working uh, quite at length with many partners in the space that offer MDM solutions to uh, work eSIM provisioning into their solutions and to figure out that workflow. So that is coming in the near future and, and look for that capability. And then a third way of provisioning SIMs onto devices are kind of on-demand provisioning. This might be something like a QR code that is displayed at uh, a kiosk or an employee help desk or, or point of sale type of area. And uh, the end user can scan the QR code themselves uh, potentially with some other layer of authentication behind the scenes if necessary, and then get the have the eSIM provisioned uh, dynamically to them over the air. Uh, once they are provisioned with the SIM credential, then they would authenticate to the Salona network based on your policy. So the Salona network manages this um, authentication end-to-end -end as part of our solution and it can optionally tie into identity systems that are within the enterprise already today for additional levels of authorization. And you can have multiple SIM credentials per device to enable access to public and private network. So this might be a, a classic dual SIM type device where you have one credential for the private network and one credential for a public uh, MNO network so that it can roam out of the area of coverage of your private network and still have service. So depending on the use case, you can have one or both credentials on a device. Like I mentioned, the Salona solution as an end-to-end -end solution provides uh, full SIM provisioning and management capabilities. So that means that within the Salona orchestrator, you can manage what SIMs are activated for your environment, for your facilities, and push those down to one or multiple sites so that those devices can get connected. 
That includes uh, geofencing type capabilities where uh, specific devices or SIMs are only allowed to work at uh, a subset of locations if you desire. And those are all managed through the Sloan Orchestrator as, a, as the uh, management application. From a security perspective, um, security and authentication happen end-to-end uh, -end across the network, whether we're talking infrastructure-based communications for management and control plane, or for end-user uh, client device traffic handling. So from an infrastructure perspective, it starts with certificate-based authentication with a built-in CA on the Salona Orchestrator that authenticates both the Salona Edge as a packet core and the Salona APs that have credentials um, burned into them from manufacturing. So those set up secure authentication of the devices back into your environment as you're deploying the infrastructure components. And then from a client device perspective, uh, once those SIMs are provisioned onto client devices, they authenticate through the network back to the Salona Edge. So the Salona Edge has an authentication database that is maintained and provisioned uh, from the Salona Orchestrator based on your policies. So it takes the SIM inventory that you have and pushes it down to the Salona Edge at uh, one or multiple sites so that those SIMs can authenticate. Uh, a big advantage here is that the authentication infrastructure is integrated into the network infrastructure. So there's no reliance on an external AAA um, type of infrastructure to deploy in parallel to enable the, this high level of security. It's kind of built into the solution. Uh, from a traffic uh, encryption and, and um, integrity perspective, over the air, everything is uh, secured with uh, AES ciphering. Uh, IPsec tunnels are available from the APs back to the Salona Edge as an optional uh, aspect. So that if the APs, for instance, are communicating with a centralized Salona Edge deployment in a private or public cloud, potentially going over untrusted backhaul, um, all of that traffic can still be secured via an IPsec tunnel from the APs back to the edge. And then lastly, from a management perspective, the Salona Edge uh, communicates back with the Salona Orchestrator for control and uh, policy management through a TLS tunnel. So if you have deployed Salona Edge on-premises and are connecting it back to a public cloud hosted Salona Orchestrator, all of that uh, management traffic and policy uh, traffic is communicated via secured and authenticated TLS tunnel back out uh, an unsecured link so that none of that can be uh, intercepted. Um, before I go into the, the radio the, and the aspects of the access points, uh, any questions on client devices or subscriber management? When do you expect to see eSIM, uh, realistically speaking, in the Solana product? Yeah, I'll hand that one over to Rajiv, I think. I think um, realistically, Q1 of next year is probably a good time frame to expect it. Very good, thank you. Hey, quick question. Um, with your SIM, are you expecting EAP AKA and EAP 5G to be supported as well as EAP TLS? Uh, I know AKA for sure. On the EAP 5G, uh, Mehmet, do you know on that one? Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, that, that will be part of the 5G solution. But right now we have the solution for all the um, LTE type uh, devices. And that, that will come with the 5G solution of, uh, that we provide. Do you guys think uh, with this, with CBRS that SIMs will be more commonplace in more and more devices uh, going forward? Because um, obviously traditional mobile devices, traditional mobile devices, we'll call them, already have that capability. Um, do you see that the SIM becoming more popular in things like, uh, I, I put a thing on Twitter about how Chromebooks, like if, if, you, if there was a SIM in a Chromebook right now, K-12s would be eating this stuff up with the current situation we're in. I mean, that, that's what I believe anyways. Do you, do you see like that transitioning into devices that are not traditionally using SIM cards? I think I think we do, Mitch, but maybe not at the pace at which things that already have cellular radios. I think SIMs and cellular radios kind of are a package together. And there is a class of devices that is pretty used to having a cellular radio, like smartphones, like tablets, like these gateways. 
And laptops, you know, over the last 15 years, I think we have seen multiple generations trying to do it. Uh, I think there is a numerous set of factors that are coming together once again this time around, which we expect will happen, but um, probably take a little bit more time before that happens. I don't know what Chromebook's roadmap is. I saw your tweet and I, I agree with your comment. I, I hope somebody does that soon too. <laughs> I would also add that since, you know, we're moving from physical SIM to eSIM, that the the hardware cost of integrating SIMs is, is coming down as well. And since it's not necessarily going to be tied to, uh, you know, mobile network operator specific type devices with subscriptions anymore, that's just another, you know, hurdle that is coming down to easy adoption of, of that technology into more form factors and devices. So once it's, you know, private networks and the demand is there to have it as a, an option for a lot more devices. I think we're going to see it transition, probably just like you saw um, Wi-Fi radios transition from 2.4 only radios and a lot of devices to dual band. And you're going to see them come with six gigahertz and, and tri-band support eventually. You're going to see that same kind of runway for SIM device adoption. And it's not going to be overnight. There's still going to be laggards. But by and large, I think we're going to start seeing it um, more, uh, more prevalent. And I would say there's probably a, you know, a marketing code word to look out for as laptops and Chromebooks come out. My guess is they will market them as 5G laptops and 5G Chromebooks. And that usually indicates that, okay, now I have a cellular radio in there. Uh, you can almost be sure that means it has CVRS slash MAN48 support. I know Lenovo did a release last month of a similar laptop that had CBRS band support in it as well. So I anticipate that's the marketing under which it would show up first at least.